Hello, fellow leggers. Lovely to see you. We are at Shakespeare's Globe in London. To see the play Othello. So stick around to hear our thoughts on... Yeah, this piece which we've just got out of, which I think is a production that panders to the purists. And also to find out how many legs... Whether it's break a leg... Or leg it. Yes, fellow leggers, we are once again at Shakespeare's Globe. We've seen a few things here. Yeah. Um, I've, I've got to say, I was, I've been quite impressed. Yeah. Although that was under the previous artistic, artistic director, director Emma Rice. Because we've never seen anything here until, until that then. point. Well, Othello, as you may know, is written by William Shakespeare. Oh. This production is directed by Claire Van Campen, who also directed Nice Fish. Um, Farinelli and the King. Farinelli and the King. Basically, if you see Mark Rylance on stage, stage chances she's got a little hand in it. Um, Othello's the story of a military general sent overseas to defend his country's territories against a Turkish threat. However, it's Othello who ends up a threat to himself and those around him as he, um, as the jealousy that devours, devours him. him becomes raging and all consuming. Yes, this is one of my favourite Shakespeare's. Yeah. Well, there's some great stuff out there, but I remember picking this text up um, when I was in my late teens and it being one of the first ones that I could actually read. And, and I was like, this, this makes perfect sense. Wow. And, and I really have enjoyed it ever since. The only experience I've had of Othello before now is the National Theatre one with Adrian Lester and um, the guy that you love. Rory Kinnear. Rory Kinnear. Um, and we saw the NT Live version and I wasn't feeling my best and I fell asleep before the interval. It's shameful. I'm sorry. Really shameful. I'm, 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 I'll make an effort to anyway, see Anyway, move on. What point. do we need to know about this? This production. Well, and Andre Holland is playing the title character. He's best known for his role as Kevin in the Oscar-winning film Moonlight. Oh wow! So American coming over for this, and that's a big deal because that, that one won Oscars, right? Yeah, there was all that controversy where they weren't sure if it was that or La La Land. Oh yes, it was. That was awkward, wasn't it? But he was in the room where that <laughs> happened. <laughs> okay, Isn't that amazing. Um, also in the cast is Oscar, Tony, BAFTA, and Olivier Award winner Mark Rylance. I'm quite excited to be seeing him. You would have probably recently seen him in Ready Player One, um, uh, or Bridge of Spies, or any other Spielberg. Spielberg movie the in the last of sort BFG. of five years, he sort of plays the same character. And this also, this year's Olivier Award winner for Best Supporting Actress in a Musical, Sheila Queen Atom. Sheila Atim, who plays Amelia, the enticing sort of handmaid Amelia. Two and a half hours, including interval, so not one of Shakespeare's longest, which I'm fairly pleased about because we are standing in this one. So yes, stick around for our 30 second interval breakdown and how many legs at the end. We've come to the interval, which means it is time for the break of leggers. 30, 30 second, second interval, interval breakdown. Go. Oh, what, what do you, you think? think? You start. Am I going first? Um, I like the piece. Um, I'm interested in how it's being told. It's a very stripped back version, relying heavily on the text and not so much on the production values. Um, but I like it already as a piece. The drama seems a bit slow though. How about you? I'm really struggling with the bits in between plot points. I'm not feeling it. I think with an inaccessibility of language, you've got to throw everything at the production and this is far too barren for me so far. Let's see what the next act... Well, build as a tragedy, I've got to say, Othello had a lot of funny moments and I've struggled to sort of place it in Shakespeare's repertoire. It's just a tragedy. It is a tragedy. I mean, it but is. like but any great there's... tragedy, it has comic moments in the text. Or maybe it's just the genius of the actors that they're able to really ring out. And I did feel at times they're really ringing out the comedy moments. Do you think tune like at the was... scenery, though? Do you know what I mean? Like playing it for laughs. Almost a bit. Is it a bit too much? You know, I did, think, I did think at times it was a bit self-indulgent mm. in that regard. And to be honest with you, I, I think I can skip right onto a performance there. I think that's Mark Rylance's downfall. I think he does it a lot. I've got to say, I don't, I am yet to see a live Mark Rylance performance that isn't a carbon copy of what I've 
we've seen him do before. It's all these sort of knowing looks and this, uh, it's sort of a bit carry on y. And but do you it's know very what? good. He does what he, he does, does that really well. well. But what I, I, I've got to ask find... the question is where is his range? What? Where is it? As an actor, you know, unfortunately for me, I think, yes, that's fine, but you've got to shape an entire character around his personality because he has default Rylance, as far as I can see. That's, I, think I never saw Jerusalem. I... There's a lot of Rylance I've not seen, but as far as I've seen him live, he I... does Rylance. I think that that's almost the cleverness of his craft. What he does is so easy and so natural and in so much control that the stage is his domain and he is welcoming us into his environment and he can just drop in and out of it at a whim. And he can, you know, he can really drive and some of the text that he was saying just made such an utter sense as if he was speaking to me modern day English. It just rolls off his tongue. Yeah, I, I do agree it's a certain style of playing mm. that he does and that is what he does but he does it bloody well and I think it's an unspoken craft in there. The issue I have, it's much like telling a joke and hearing a punchline once it's really funny, hearing it twice it's less so, hearing it a third time it just loses its impact and for me that's his downfall. I mean I know out there you'll disagree and I'd love to hear about other Mark Rylance performances that I've not seen where he doesn't do that. Um, you jumped onto performances. Yeah, I did, let's but let's go Othello. back to let's go back to the text. It's okay. It's very different to um, a number of his other pieces, uh, Shakespeare's other pieces obviously. Um, it's a really um, clever drama that slowly interweaves web and web and web and web of um, deceit and slow pop plot points and I think on this setting I struggled a little bit. I'm presuming they're in rep. Um, yeah, they are. And because they've been rep, as a result, they had very limited set. They didn't now, have any set. I want to talk a little bit about this because um, for me, um, my understanding of Emma Rice's tenure here as oh, artistic director was to that Rice. she took challenges, she, she took risks and she invited directors on board in this place that sort of were invited to tell Shakespeare in a different way. This production, and it's the only production I've seen under Michelle Terry as artistic director here, for me panders to the purists. It panders to those who want to see Shakespeare in a one-lighting state with no set, um, with as it would have been told in Shakespearean times, with no consideration or respect for a modern day audience. Something that Emma Rice did magnificently in everything we've seen here and something that I fear for me is going to detract me and put me off coming back to the globe because I don't like this direction. Really? And do you really? think it's direction, not piece? I think it's direction. I think it's, firstly, a Shakespeare piece for me. Um, it's not in the hands of the actor, it's in the hands of the director, probably more so than a lot of other playwrights that I have seen. And I think um, Van Campen here has not done a great job when it comes to having a vision outside of the box, as in that's what the Shakespeare is on the on the page, that's what it would have been in the 1700s, and that's what, was it 1600s? But that's what I'm gonna do, and you know what? It was boring. I guess there is, um, within that, that is what the tourist wants. Is it what the tourist wants? It's I mean, here we are on the South Bank. Mm. People pay to have the experience within the traditional setting of how it would have been standing in the grounds and you know just seeing the actors up close and yeah. no big set pieces or lighting pieces. I worry that this is going to then become a tourist trap. It's going to be something that is built just for those people that want that experience. It's going to become a museum. It's going to become sort of just a, a, an archaic example. It's going to become people in costumes telling a story uh, it's 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 something that I don't want to I don't want to see. Although it's difficult to tell because we're only basing that on this one production yes, in this but whole so season. so far, that's what I think. I'd give it another go. I would hope for something else. Other performances. Other performances. I suppose. I mean, we have the the most recent winner of an Olivier Award in the in, in the form of Sheila Atkin, who Atten. won um, I think Best she's Actress in a Musical. On stage, she's visually stunning. She's such well, she, an impressive. No one 
live. No one, but no one, wears shoulder pads like her. <laughs> That's very no true. No one. And she had these lovely, old, very 80s-esque um, costumes, um, costumes, outfits mm. in this. I couldn't quite place the style. Now, that's another thing that really bothered me because I don't know what time period we were setting in here because yeah. we suddenly had Suggs playing the like bassoon with sunglasses on. Like, what the hell was that? What the hell was that? Oh, go on then. While we're on the what the hell was that, can we just talk about the bows? Okay. Like, it's, it's quite a solemn ending. I, d yeah. I, d I, d I don't want to give too much away, but it's just Shakespeare, so everyone dies. It's a tragedy, yeah. pretty much. Um, <laughs> and have this very sorrowful, morning lamenting song, and then suddenly they're jumping I around. I actually know why that is. Thing. That's historically is that? accurate. Is that so, in did? Shakespeare's times, whenever there was a tragedy, they would put a jig on at the end so the audience would at least go out with a spring in their step. So we're not that wanting is, to kill ourselves. Again, pandering to the purists, that is why that happens. Okay, well, because I guess it's traditional. in modern day theatre telling, that just felt a bit weird. I thought they'd want us to sit with the message, you know, yeah. careful of the green-eyed monster and trust that person who you trust. Yeah. How much do you trust them? Or just the, the key messages about loss but and that, making wrong decisions. But that wouldn't be Those what the, were the messages. That wouldn't be what the purists and the, and the tourists want. They want the jig. Whereas instead I left with... And it was, it was a happy ending, but it just didn't, it seemed odd. Andre Holland in the role of Othello, go. Loved him. Okay. I think he's a really good actor. I, I really liked what he did, but I've seen it, I've done a few times, and it's a really hard role. A beautiful journey um, from, you know, loving in love, and then those seeds of doubt, and then the anger, the frustration, to then switching to how much does it take to somebody to commit murder, and have that in their repertoire, and seeing that that's the only thing that can be done because he, in his words, loves too much. I don't think for me he played jealousy as often as he played whininess and whinginess and it was also a bit, it was very woe is me, it was almost Hamlet-esque as in a performance. I, I didn't buy it, personally. Um, also, let's mention Stephen Donnelly as Rodrigo, probably some of the comic relief. His scenes yeah. with Rylance were amusing, um, were entertaining. Um, can we please just touch on one second the horrible interpretive dance ballet thing? Oh, ugh. It's funny because we talk about purists. Is that what it would have been done in the would original? Would we have had a ballet would after, have after a death scene? Or would they have been adding in songs? It felt as if a few songs were added in. That last song, I'm sure, was an added in song. I mean, we got an opportunity to hear Sheila know. Atim sing. And which I mean, is never a bad thing. Which is thing. never a bad thing. And her singing is her strength. Mm. Take from that what you will. Um, let's wrap it up. I think, okay. unless there's anything else you want to say. I mean, there is no lighting, so that's a bit of a moot Single point. Single state. Like, there's um, nothing else to mention in terms of we were unlucky, production. We were unlucky early on because we were today in the flight path of, is it City Airport? Probably, yeah, so, or maybe, um, maybe I think it's city. Heathrow. No, Heathrow is the other direction, no. it's City. We had a um, lot of planes, which so halted the action a lot. Um, which I've never really experienced that much before, so I don't know mm. if usually they fly the other way, but this time... Yeah directly this over our head. And, and it's no amplification here because you know purists with no and amplification so I really noticed it I think under the last difficult. tenure we did have amplification yeah under Emma we did but you know okay. they've anyway. got Claire on board because we want to get rid of that modern drive apparently. I guess you're probably wondering Claire and Michelle even, how many legs we're going we to are give going to give Othello, Othello. <laughs> playing here at Shakespeare's Globe on the South Bank for this piece we are going to give two two I'm um, some Really nice, strong performances, and I'm always going to love watching Mark Rylance um, perform. He is a master on the stage, a master with text. Considering Othello is your favourite Shakespeare, though, yeah. would you agree that this does not do it justice uh, it's for a bit you? It's a bit slow for me. I, I, I agree, kind of lating missing some real creative flair. The ultimate for me has been so far, um, I think it was Nick Heitner over in the Olivier at the National Theatre with Adrian Lester and Rory Kinnear. And that vision and that drive... It was a better interpretation of this. Was, uh, yeah. I, if we'd have been sitting, which we weren't, we were standing as one of the groundlings, which is a bargain, by the way, I would have fallen asleep. 
Sorry, not for me. But hey, that's, that's just what, what we, we think. think. And that's just yeah. our view. What and, do you, know, you think? Yeah. I mean, you, there's, there's so great value here. You've got an opportunity and this is sold out. But come to the globe and have an experience. And if you yes. love history, you'll love it. It's a living history lesson. Is it more than that as a creative force? Then the jury is out. But you know what? We're the Breaker Leggers. And we'll, and we'll catch, catch you again, again soon. Bye. Bye.